National Park Service emblem on a black background, Manhattan Project National Historical Park, sleeper agent, the atomic spy in America who got away, author Anne Hagedorn in an office. I have a sequence, a normal sequence in picking my topics, discovering the best narrative to bring the topics alive, right? I'm a narrative nonfiction writer, so my job is to, you know, find the truth, dig deeply, do you know, vast research, and then find a narrative that brings the story alive, right? Mm -hmm. That brings yeah. the issues, the individuals, and, uh, you know, it's basically, uh, it's unearthing facts and using the art of storytelling to deliver them to the general reader. So uh, the sequence is always, you know, find the topic, uh, research, 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 and at some point, uh, you will discover um, uh, the best narrative to bring it alive. And, you know, basically that's, I worked at the Wall Street Journal for many years and I learned that sort of, uh, you know, process, of course, from doing front page stories for the journal. But uh, this time was <laughs> completely different. I was in the middle of, in 2016, I was searching for a narrative for a particular topic I'd been researching and it was just not working. And I, I swear, I think that the person I was interviewing um, on the day I discovered the Koval story um, instinctively knew because at the end of the interview, uh, this gentleman, he was a 92 year old gentleman said to me, he knew that I had grown up in Dayton, Ohio. And he said, by the way, did you know that in Dayton, Ohio, there had been a, a secret site tied to the highly secretive Manhattan Project and, uh, <clears throat> and that uh, Soviet spy worked there during World War II. And at the end of the interview, at the very end, he said, you really should dig into that because I think he lived near where you grew up. <laughs> So I, so I was very polite to him, very professional, of course. And, uh, you know, these things happen all the time. Often they're rumors. And so I, I put on that uh, sort of uh, mix of, kicked into gear that mix of skepticism and curiosity. You know, uh, I really believed it was a rumor and I didn't really have time to dig into it. Uh, for about two weeks. So then, uh, and and he had no name, which was another reason I thought, oh, this has to be a rumor, you know. Yeah, I'm sure you run across these things all the time. Uh, and so I decided I, I can't, uh, I, I can't let it go. I've got to find out. So I did just basic surface digging, you know, and found a story in the New York Times that had run 10 years before that uh, interview, uh, uh, about 10 years before, and it was the one uh, uh, noting the posthumous award given to George Koval by Vladimir Putin. And <clears throat> I thought this must be the guy. So uh, then I put together, uh, you know, with my usual flight plan, as I call it, you know, the list of what was clearly known, what had to be known if I was going to flesh out the story or even think about doing a biography, and then a list of the archives and, you know, uh, uh, primary sources, people to interview, all that. And then I immediately called the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press to find out the uh, current wisdom on the best way to file Freedom of Information Act requests and then jumped in the car and went to College Park, Maryland to the National Archives for about two weeks. That was it, you know. Wow. Yeah, yeah. well, from then on, I, I swear, and you could, I could give you names of people who would tell you I barely took a day off. You know, I, in the process of finding letters, journals, postcards, news clips, yearbooks, photos, maps, tax records, ship manifests, passport records, arrest records, application forms of all sorts, even inscriptions in books, thousands of pages of FBI reports, and of course lots of people to interview. But um, 
But you know, at one point to make before we leave this uh, answer and go to the next question, but the um, you know, it, it, when you write a biography of a spy, of course, it's difficult because they're not exactly leaving uh, a clear trail for you. But this George Koval was never caught, so there were no trial transcripts. And that, you know, I'm so used to going to court records and trial transcripts, et cetera, et cetera, when I'm digging. And uh, of course, he was never caught, so we didn't have anything like that to go. <laughs> it was amazing. So I did find a wonderful Russian translator to work with and um, a great uh, research assistant who went through thousands of pages of FBI reports for me and color coded them according to index them for me. That would, uh, made it easier uh, to uh, study. So anyhow, that's the that's the short answer to your question. 